Soon after Pearl Harbor, German saboteurs were captured in New Jersey, and then during their interrogation it was learned that their targets included the CNO Railroad, as well as four other American railroads. So the CNO quickly designed and built shanties such as this one and placed along the railroad in strategic places such as tunnels, trussels, and bridges and other areas spaced five to six miles apart. The watchmen worked 12-hour shifts in here and during the day they would walk in each direction and meet the watchmen at the next neighboring watch box. The railroad called these watch boxes. The phone box is a wooden CNO phone box and came from the west end of Gladstone Yard. And it has in it a Strongberg Carlson phone from the 1950s. The watch box is furnished as though it was in service on the railroad, but after World War II. This particular watch box came from Abert on the James River subdivision of the CNO. It was just a few miles west of Lynchburg. Parts of the grade crossing warning are from three different railroads. The bell and flashing lights are NNW. The track number is Southern and the glass beaded sign is Virginian. The position light signal is NNW and it was put in service on the Shenandoah line of NNW in 1925. It was retired from service about 1990. It operated on 10 volts and is restored to represent an automatic block signal for westbound trains on the old NW main line through Lynchburg, milepost 206.3, which is now part of the bike trail. 206.3 was a favorite place of mine for train watching and photography in the late 1950s. The train that you hear blowing in the background is a CSX train on the James River subdivision which is near our home. NNW used this metal cased phone box all over its line at least from right after World War II until many decades later. Inside is a phone with a unique on off switch and a crank for the employee to use a code to reach the desired location. The CNO color light signal is restored to represent an automatic block signal on the James River subdivision. This particular mile post was known by railroad men as Gobbler's Knob 172.5. However, this signal actually spent its life at St. Albans, West Virginia, west of Charleston. It was made by Union Switch and Signal in 1947 and retired in the spring of 2008. Like the signals of the Virginian and NNW, it operated on 10 volts. The Atlantic and Danville Railroad is represented by this switch stand from the abandoned section in Lawrenceville, Virginia. It has a part casting date on it of 1898. Perch, Virginia was a community a few miles west of Rusin's on the James River subdivision of the CNO. This sign is original and the spelling is unique. As we've been walking about areas of our railroad relic garden, we have been walking on paths made of railroad tie plates discarded from the B&O, CNO, Greenbrier, Cheat and Elk, Norfolk and Western, Southern, and Virginian railroads. Hundreds of hours of research and plain old back-breaking work 
has gone into building our boneyard of railroad relics. We hope you have enjoyed seeing some of our pieces and that you will come for a personal visit. We can be reached by phone at 434-386-2226, by email at vgnry43 at aol.com. We have a website, but the address is long, as is most of them. So if you go to Google and type in a search for Milepost 141 Railroad Relic Garden, you will find the link to our website. The restoration and erection of these pieces would not have been, po been possible without help and support of some fine friends namely my wife Charlotte, Ben Blevins, Matt Crouch, Bobby Dudley, Greg Elam, Charlie Long, Rick Rader, Brian Trent, grandson Felix Guevara, and Martin Moorfield who made this video. Thank you and we hope to hear from you soon.